What's up guys, welcome to Superwise, I'm John, and obviously today we got our first official trailer for Venom Let There Be Carnage. I personally really liked it, you can see my reaction, it's the previous video to this. Yeah, I love the first Venom movie, and this trailer is more of the same from the first Venom movie, and that's what I really like about it. Can't wait to see Carnage in live action, I, I dig the design even though it's not fully comic accurate. Anyway. I found out that Andy Serkis did an exclusive trailer breakdown with IGN and I wanted to react to that video because I want to see and hear Andy Serkis talk about this movie. Why did he choose it? What's he going to take from the first Venom movie? What are the little Easter eggs and references to Spider-Man and the first Venom movie? Like, I'm very interested in hearing his process. So let's go ahead and hear what the man himself has to say about this film. Welcome. My name is Andy Serkis, and I am lucky enough to have been the director on Venom, Let There Be Carnage. And I am so excited after all this time, after what seems like an endless period of time, to finally bring you the world first trailer of this amazing movie starring Tom Hardy, Michelle. You can say Williams, that again. And Woody Harrelson and Naomi Harris. So welcome to the trailer, which we're going to break down and share a few stories about it. Here we go. Let's go. I mean, imagine living in this flat. You've got You've got crazy Eddie Brock, and you've got crazy Venom, and they are now what is in effect in the odd couple stage of their relationship. It's, this is now they've been together for I don't know, imagine a year and a half, say, um, mm, since the year last and a half, story, okay. and it's, they're figuring out how to be with each other. What and it's like living with this maniac uh, toddler. Um, Eddie, Eddie's really struggling. He can't concentrate. He's trying to get on with work, and he's, of course, only thinks about himself anyway. Excuse me. Yummy. Good evening, great, Eddie. Great hey, sound Chair. choice. Good evening, Venom. Bunch of hell, Mrs. Chair. Uh, little <laughs> Easter egg as he passes. I'm not going to give too much away, actually, but there's a little Easter egg in the suit. And then he just points to him there. And on you go. And Mrs. Hmm. Chen runs the convenience store, and that's where they go for their chocolate supplies and so on. Now, oh, okay, Woody Harrelson. Cletus Cassidy in this story, of course, we, we've left the, the last movie, and, the, and the, the, egg on, the Easter egg on the end was, was the introduction of Cletus Cassidy. But it seems that from, from the way that we lead into this story, that they have formed some sort of relationship, and he's the only person that uh, Cassidy will talk to. And it's because hmm. there's something in, in, in their personalities, both their personalities, which, um, you know, in fact, there is a similarity. They both had strange upbringings with strange relationships with their, with their parents and their, and their families. And there's an, a sort of a low, an inherent loneliness that they both recognize in each other. Okay, that's, that's interesting. reaches out and will only speak to Eddie Brock. Uh, that's the, 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 at the beginning of the story. We learn that he's the only one he would speak to, and the cops want, therefore, want uh, Eddie to go in and investigate and try and discover where some of the bodies, some of the many bodies that uh, of, of, of Cletus's victims are. Okay. Every decision we ever make. Obviously, there are links between Venom and Spider-Man Spider in the Marvel Universe and the Spider-Man story. But in this, you know, we're treating this very much as it's his own world. The Venom story is his own world. There are nods and, and little moments that, that you just like this newspaper, the Daily Bugle, of course. Um, but on the, on the whole, he kind of, he's unaware. They are unaware at this point um, of, of, of other uh, characters like Spider-Man, um, so that's 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 the way we've chosen to play this particular episode of the of the, of the movie. Okay, just to chime in here, that's interesting because from the very beginning, Sony was like, "This is the Venom verse. It's not connected to anything MC related. It's it's its own thing. It, it doesn't have Spider-Man." 
But when you look at the Morbius trailer, you have Michael Keaton as Vulture at the end of that trailer, seemingly teasing that Morbius takes place in the MCU. And there have been rumors that Tom Holland might actually show up in this film. So, I, you know, I, I partially believe Andy Serkis that this might be its own thing. But, uh, you know, when, when looking at the facts, I think that Venom might be a part of the larger MCU. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. So the, of, the, of the movie, but, well, we'll wait and see. We'll see what, what, what little uh, things you can pick out of it. This character here, though, is um, his name is Mulligan and played by the incredible Stevie Graham, who you have seen in loads of movies recently, really talented uh, British actor. He plays Mulligan, who is the cop who's really trying to investigate uh, Cletus Cassidy and uh, is, is waiting for news, wait, you know, constantly waiting for news um, from Eddie as he goes in and, and interrogates him. Who do we leave behind? Also, that Daily Bugle logo is from the Sam Raimi movie, so that, this that's interesting. This lovely little abode is, uh, of course, well known to fans. I'm not going to say too much about it, but of course it houses some of the world's greatest supervillains. And it's a secret place. Mm -hmm. Not even Detective Mulligan and, and That'd SFB be an interesting Nova. place to uh, explore. Another slightly different entry point into this strange place, um, which of course links up to other Marvel Universe characters, particularly the Spider-Man stories, of course. Right, right. Um, but again, without giving too much away. Here we have the incredible Naomi Harris as Frances Barrison, a.k.a. Shriek. Shriek. And she mm -hmm. is... Very, as we know from, from those who know the comics well, know that she had a very difficult childhood too. Un, not unlike right. many of the other characters in this movie, it's very much a running theme. Family, parents, how things have gone wrong, how people may know, if they're fans of the Venom comics, how damaged she has been and uh, been bullied and, and uh, manipulated by parents and mm. has, you know, went through a tr very traumatic upbringing. And forms a very strong, lifelong relationship with her uh, childhood sweetheart, who I'm not going to give away who that is right now. In the darkness of the rescuer. Hmm. I wonder who that comes. is. Welcome back, Eddie Brock. Cletus Cassidy, maybe? <laughs> That'd be interesting. Miss you so much. And this is our introduction to... To, to Cletus. Now, you'll notice that Cletus says it looks very different to the um, coda in the last movie. Right, no way. And we wanted to give a sense that, that he is, you know, he's been in there for some time and that he's gone through various changes. We wanted to strip away all of that so that we could really That's one see way of putting what's it. going the on. Wig the wig in the first Venom character. movie was bad and they had to get rid of it. That's the second explanation. end of Cletus as we see it and you know he finally is about to depart this world or so we think mm. come chaos but no, because guess what this is called let there be carnage let's face it so is he really going to disappear I don't think so that and shot looks are. like we from a, a, like a, a bloody bit, gory a rated R type thing I hope this movie is rated R Cletus Cassidy into carnage the scene which you, precedes this is, is obviously it's his, you know an execution scene and so what, what's so great about this movie is that you can go from the, the real life, you know, and it feels very real when we're shooting that whole scene. It felt very, um, you know, this is real. It's, it's a completely a replica of, um, of the San Quentin um, Death by Lethal Injection Chamber. And, it, and it's sort of, it's, it's got a really weird, dark, horrible kind of mood to it. So, and then it goes into this, which is, which is what's so amazing about these stories is that you can go from a, from from a sense of reality and a, a, a re, you know it's all based in reality and then you can then you can shift into an extraordinary character like this you know the literally the birthing of carnage. Here we see a little moment of um, of the potential capabilities of. Francis Barrison's <laughs> potential and, and what she can, what you know, it's just a slight indication 
of, of, the, of the damage and the havoc she can wreak as Shriek. So a little indication of, of carnage at play with what you can do. I mean, this character was so much fun to work on and design and to... And to yeah, Andy Serkis is the, and the master of mocap. I'm sure world. the mocap and here so, will be know, great. So many, I mean, it was just it was wonderful having the opportunity to take this character that's never been seen before on screen. Um, you know, really, yeah, exactly. Really, you know, to, to, into the, into never the, never been the, seen before. This is the first time. It's in insane. Our, our story. Um, and, and to really play with the physicality, how he moves, how he... Um, how he yeah, Andy, his, Andy's uh, going to have a ball with this character. How, you know, what, cause this, there's a difference between... I mean, as a, as a symbiote, there are differences between, say, Venom and Carnage, for those who know, of, of they're, they're obvious. You know, he can actually change in a, molecularly. He can actually change himself. So he can right. go from being... Um, he can turn to mist. He can turn to... Uh, all manner of tendrils he can take different forms he can weaponize he can do all of these different things chaos soon come the money shot the thumbnail shot the final reveal for this moment that you see in the trailer the first time you fully see um, you fully see carnage. We we just wanted again to not give too much away, but just yeah, to that's a great shot. You see the tendrils snapshot, and everything. The energy, the crazy energy, the weapons, the tendrils, the you know, just a little moment for, for everybody to, to get. Yeah, Andy's team, gonna make this movie so badass. Look at, uh, at what it's gonna be like. The chocolate delivery hasn't arrived yet. No! We had a deal. What's gonna happen? You gonna stop protecting me? I am happy to eat, Mrs. Chen. No, no, you cannot eat, Mrs. Chen. What? The, the, the fact of the matter is that there's a normality and an everydayness to carrying a symbiote around inside you. And one of those things is you have to make sure your symbiote's fed, quite frankly. And... <laughs> Um, Mrs. Chen, who's a character we, we come back to and we... we I like how there's a continuity. Even though there's a different the director, movie, you have it's recurring it's like characters. Place, I like that you know, continuity. There, there are a number of scenes that happen there. It's sort of, it's like a, it's like plugging back into, into normal world for a second. And, uh, and yet, um, you know, you can, you can just see, you can see from, from, from Eddie's expressions throughout this that he's, you know, he's now, and of course that, Mrs. Chen knows know, knows about Venom, so she's not freaked out by it until until Eddie's Eddie's sort of uh, mildly uh, threatens her with um, you know what might happen if she doesn't keep the secret. Nothing. And then finally, this uh, great this, shot, great this shot. One of, the, one of the moments from the movie. I'm not going to talk too much Another about it. Another money shot. Too much away, but it's it's a nice. Looks like he's in a church or something with the glass in the background. A little bit more of carnage and and the fact that he's coming right at you and uh, and that he is, you know, again going back to the, what I was talking about earlier with how he weaponizes, how he uh, is able, you know, the tendrils, how they work, how his physicality works. Um, but just the very, you know, almost here we leave him in this semi-godlike, right. <laughs> Shot very, very uh, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, sort of um, iconic shot of um, of Carnage. Yeah, that's that a great shot. So that's the trailer, the first trailer. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. I mean, thank you, Andy Circus, for uh, coming, and you've been so, so patient, giving you us these uh, new details on Venom to be Carnage on the big screen. You know, for, for a lot of the t a lot of. A lot of this time, of course, during COVID, we've been working away on small laptops and computers. And yeah, I'm, I'm so excited for Andy Circus to tackle Venom. You know, it's been a global effort. Seems to like he's going to have a together. fun so time doing it. So we are thrilled when you finally do get to see it. When you, you know, when you see it in the cinemas, um, uh, there's a lot of love and a, a lot of excitement. And uh, we hope you... We've yeah, really I'm ruined for you, Andy Circus. Great, great, great trailer. So yeah, that was director Andy Serkis providing new details on Venom Let There Be Carnage. 
I'm very excited for this movie. I surprisingly wasn't losing hype for this movie, you know, after all that time that we didn't have a trailer because I just loved the first Venom movie and I was anticipating, anticipating, anticipating the sequel trailer. I, I was getting pissed off. Like, can we get this trailer already? And now we have it. Now I can admire it and put it on replay for, you know, hours on end. Um, I, I can't wait to see this. Andy Serkis seems to have put a lot of love and passion into the effects, the mocap, just the film overall. And yeah, I, I, I am excited. I truly am excited to see this film, where it goes, if it's tied to the MCU, see if it, Tom Holland makes an appearance. I'm very interested in the future. But tell me in the comments down below, have you watched this video? What did you think of the details that uh, Andy uh, Circus provided? Let me know in the comments down below. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you haven't subbed already. I'd love to have you here. You'd be supporting the Superwise family. It'd mean a great deal. So subscribe. That'll be all for me. And remember my catchphrase, guys. Stay Superwise. Oh, and also before I go, can we just admire this poster? This poster is badass. I mean, it's not your stereotypical characters all together standing in a pose poster. This is like an engaging, interesting poster how uh, Carnage's tentacles are wrapped around Venom and you can see the inside of Carnage's mouth. It's, it's badass. It's cool. All right. Stay super wise. Subscribe. See you next time.